Okay, so now that the news about the imminent asteroid impact has died down a bit, I feel like that I can finally talk about it and tell you everything that you've been hearing about it is most likely completely wrong. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, let's talk about asteroid 2024 YR4. Now, if you haven't heard, we have a problem on our hands. An asteroid is headed straight for Earth. Now, asteroids hit the Earth all of the time. It's estimated that about 44,000 kilograms of the stuff hit the Earth every single day. But most of these things are quite small, just grain sized. They'll burn up in our atmosphere, creating the meteors that we call shooting stars. Occasionally, they may even make it to the ground for the truly fortunate meteorite hunter to find. It's pretty unlikely that it's going to be this massive dinosaur extension level asteroid that we're all thinking of though. I mean, the last big one that I remember was the Shelia Binks meteorite, which turned night into day in Russia back in 2013. Now, that house-sized asteroid injured almost a thousand people, shattering people's windows and rocking buildings. But 2024 YR4 is reportedly as large as 100 meters in size. That's about the size of a football field. So yeah, I guess it makes sense that people are calling it a city killer. Because yes, an asteroid that size could technically wipe out an entire city. Now, to report the risk of an asteroid, there are two main scales used. The Palermo scale is a technical assessment typically used by scientists that compare the risk to a background risk of a random impact. Higher values will indicate higher risk, but the scale is also logarithmic, which means that an increase of one unit will represent a tenfold increase in risk. The Torino scale is more commonly used to inform the general public about potential impact threats in a simple and understandable way. This scale takes integer values between 0 and 1, with 0 representing no hazard and 10 representing a certain collision with global consequences. So what about asteroid 2024 YR4? Discovered on December 27, 2024, this asteroid currently holds a rating of 3 on the Torino scale as of February 12th, 2025. And that means that it merits attention, but also isn't a serious threat yet. The estimated impact probability for December 22nd, 2032, so seven years from now, is one in 45, or about 2.2%, which might sound alarming when written out, but it's still a very low chance for now. Lately, I've been seeing people on social media claiming that 2024 YR4 is headed straight for Nottingham. We now know where the giant asteroid that's heading towards Earth might actually hit. So if you're in the red zone, then you're pretty much done for. Or that it's okay, it's on a direct course for somewhere else below the equator. The risk corridor of this asteroid stretches across the eastern Pacific Ocean, northern South America, the Atlantic Ocean, Africa, the Arabian Sea, and South Asia. Now, let's be clear, that is misinformation. Before I explain why those claims are wrong, let me show you how you can find the real data for yourself so you don't have to rely on the rumors. If you ever want to check on a particular asteroid yourself, I'd say the best place to go is ESA's Near Earth Objects Coordination Center, NEOCC. NASA have a similar database too. But it's here where you'll find a list of all known asteroids with a non-zero probability of hitting Earth, aka the risk list. And guess what? 2024 YR4 is right there at the top. The database gives us key details, including the estimated size between 40 and 100 meters. More on this later. The predicted impact date and time right down to the minute the impact probability, the Palermo and Torino scale ratings, and a ton of other information. But here's where things get interesting. If we check the history plot, we can see how the impact probability and also the Palermo scale rating have changed over time. Huh? Hang on, that's odd. Why have these values shifted so much since its discovery? It was just discovered three months ago. Let's dig a bit deeper. 
ESA also provides an orbit visualization tool, and this allows us to track where the asteroid is now and where it's headed. If we fast forward to December 22nd, 2032, oh, well, would you look at that? It doesn't even hit the Earth. The truth is the uncertainty region for the 2032 asteroid passage is 2 million kilometers wide. For reference, the Earth is just 13,000 kilometers in diameter. Even the distance to the moon is much smaller than this uncertainty at about 400,000 kilometers. As far as we know, asteroid 2024 YR4 is just as likely to hit the moon as it is to hit the Earth. We just don't know. So how can anyone possibly say exactly where it will hit? But also, why is this uncertainty on the orbit so large as well? Turns out that predicting the exact path of an asteroid, especially over a long period like seven years, is surprisingly tricky. Several factors can nudge an asteroid off course, making its future trajectory uncertain. Now, one major factor is solar radiation pressure, the constant stream of charged particles and photons emitted from the sun. Over time, these forces can gradually push on the asteroid, altering its orbit. Even if we were great at predicting the activity of the sun, which by the way, we aren't. Correction to this morning's weather forecast. Modeling this effect isn't straightforward. Firstly, shape matters. If an asteroid is irregularly shaped, different parts will absorb and reflect sunlight very differently, creating an uneven radiation pressure, pushing it in different ways. Flat or elongated asteroids will feel a stronger push than spherical ones, and that's because they have a larger surface area at certain angles. And rotation also complicates things. An asteroid that's tumbling will get pushed in unpredictable ways compared to one that's stable. Now, I don't know if you remember, but before the Rosetta mission reached Comet 67P, this is what Hubble observations suggested the comet looked like. When Rosetta arrived, the comet looked absolutely nothing like what it was expected to. The same could happen with asteroid 2024 YR4, which is why telescopes like JWST have plans to observe it. But to be honest, I wouldn't bet on them getting that shape right. Albedo, so an asteroid's reflectivity, also plays a massive role. A high albedo asteroid is more reflective, so it will reflect more sunlight, increasing solar radiation pressure. A low albedo asteroid, which is more dark, will absorb more sunlight and re-emit it as heat, leading to the Yarkovsky effect, where a small but continuous thermal recoil force can shift its orbit. On the ESA database, the albedo of our asteroid is 0.6 0 0.05 to 0 0.25, with 0 being 100% absorption and 1 being 100% reflective. So it's pretty uncertain. Albedo also tells us about the amount of outgassing of an asteroid. Some asteroids will contain ice or gas pockets that if you heat them up, they'll release the gas and this can act like a tiny jet pushing the asteroid in some new direction. Dark, low albedo asteroids will tend to absorb more heat, increasing the chances of outgassing. But composition also comes into play, because if 2024 YR4 is mostly rock and metal, then it won't outgas much. Right now, we don't know whether this asteroid has volatiles, but spectroscopy or thermal infrared observations will help us figure that one out. Here's another complication. The estimated size of the asteroid is based on albedo and the brightness of the asteroid. But if we can't be certain of its albedo, how can we be sure how big it is? The size estimate also assumes that the asteroid is spherical, which we know that Almost certainly it isn't. So at this point, we're still pretty uncertain about its orbit, its shape, or even its size. But let's assume that it's a stony asteroid with a density of 2,500 kilograms per meter cubed. That's a typical assumption. And let's say it has a radius of 30 meters. We can calculate its mass 
to be about 2.8 times 10 to the 8 kilograms. The estimated impact velocity of this asteroid is 17.32 kilometers per second. This means that the kinetic energy is a half times its mass times velocity squared, which is 4.2 times 10 to the 16 joules, or in terms of energy, is about 10 megatons energy. So let's get on to Nuke Map and see what exactly that means. If the asteroid hits my lovely hometown of Coventry at 10 megatons of energy, then the thermal radiation radius will reach all the way out to Birmingham. That's at third degree burns for an insane number of people and an insane number of casualties. But wait, that's only if it hits the ground. If it explodes in midair, which depending on its composition, it could do, well, the casualties are even higher. So there's no question, this is something we should try to prevent, even if the impact probability is low. Don't worry, we are super prepared, right? Every two years, the IAA hosts the Planetary Defense Conference, where they'll play out a hypothetical asteroid impact threat scenario. They have literally been training for this situation for decades. I made a previous video covering this, so check it out if you haven't already. But potential solutions that we have have included a kinetic impactor where the spacecraft is deliberately crashed into an asteroid to change its trajectory. This has already been successfully demonstrated with the NASA's DART mission. However, whilst it's relatively simple, it only really works for smaller asteroids and it needs very long lead times. NASA has already said that it's too late for this one. We could use a gravity tractor where a spacecraft hovers around an asteroid and slowly, using its gravitational pull, alters the asteroid's trajectory. Now, this one can be used for larger asteroids and it doesn't require a direct impact, but as with the kinetic impactor, we're kind of too late for this one. We could go nuclear to either deflect or destroy the asteroid, but politically, this is kind of controversial. Who are we going to give that power to? And it might create hazardous debris raining down even more asteroids all over the Earth. Even better, we could use a high-powered laser to vaporize material from the asteroid's surface, creating a thrust to alter its trajectory. I just want to say, though, almost every scenario that they've done in these hypothetical scenarios, at least for me, I don't remember one where they actually saved us. So personally, I think the safest bet is just to track and monitor the asteroid and plan for evacuation but don't expect to have a lot of warning. Do you remember when the Chinese space station re-entered the Earth's atmosphere in 2018? The uncertainty on the landing site was initially huge, covering a wide swath of Earth's surface. As the space station got closer to re-entry, the uncertainty decreased, but it was still pretty difficult to predict the exact location of impact. The final prediction for the landing site was in the South Pacific Ocean and the actual landing location was kind of within that area. For that, they narrowed down the landing site to a specific region in a few days before re-entry. But the exact location could only be determined with certainty within a few hours before impact. And this is because there is massive drag due to the atmosphere changing the trajectory too. So is this the end of the story? Well, not quite. No, even if this asteroid doesn't hit us in 2032, there are five more potential impacts after that too. But life's too short to dwell. ESA and NASA are monitoring the situation. It's constantly changing, but space is hard. Just keep up to date with it, really. Anyway, that's all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.